All right, let's have a final look at a few examples. These, these examples will actually be quicker than the previous ones, but let's, uh, let's go through them. So what's the limit as x goes to infinity of x squared? As x gets really big, x squared also getting really big, so that's infinity. What's the limit as x goes to infinity of x squared plus 2x minus 1 over x cubed plus 3? So stop and think about this for a second. I've got a quadratic polynomial on top, a cubic one on the bottom, and x is getting really big. What should the ratio do? So here's where you want to think. What's the dominant term in the top? x squared. So again, we'll think. We'll think. Let's think. 4x huge. We have x squared plus 2x minus 1 all over x cubed plus 3 is roughly x squared over x cubed, which is the same thing as 1 over x. So when x is really huge, this ratio is roughly the same as the ratio of 1 over x. And that's going to 0. So for x huge, this is roughly 0. So I expect this limit to be 0. Well, let's do the calculation that verifies this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to use the fact that there was this cube on the bottom and it wasn't on the top. So I'm going to factor it out. Factor out an x cubed on the bottom, and that's a 1 plus 3 over x cubed. And I'm going to factor an x cubed out of everything on the top. Now you may think, well, I don't have an x cubed in all these things. That's fine. It's when I factor it out of the first term, I get a 1 over x. When I factor it out of the second term, I get 2 over x squared. And when I factor it out of the third term, I get a negative 1 over x cubed. Now, these x cubes cancel with each other. And I look at the expression. As x goes to infinity, this goes to 0. Each of these things go to 0. And so the entire expression boils down to 0 over 1 plus 0, or 0 over 1. 0 divided by 1 is 0. And so our limiting value is 0. And that's what we thought it should be. So let's look at the next example. I've got a degree 4 polynomial over a degree 2 polynomial. What do you think the limiting value is as x goes to infinity? So let's think about this for a second. The top's degree 4. It's roughly x to the fourth. When x is huge, it's roughly the size of the leading coefficient, or the leading term, sorry, which is x to the fourth. The bottom's roughly the size of x squared. The ratio is therefore x to the fourth over x squared, or x squared. And that's going to infinity. So this is what I usually write in green here as a thought. Now I'm just verbalizing it rather than writing it down because I want to I emphasize that this is what one just generally thinks when they look at a problem like this. Top's x to the fourth, bottom's roughly x squared, the ratio's there for x squared, ah, should be going to infinity just like x squared goes to infinity. So let's formalize this. I'm going to look at the limit as x goes to infinity. I'm going to factor out the highest power of x in the denominator. 1 over x plus 1 over x squared. And that corresponding highest power of x in the numerator. 5 over x minus 1 over x to the fourth. OK. I notice an x squared in the denominator cancels with two of the ones in the numerator, so that's an x squared, 1 plus 5 over x minus 1 over x to the fourth, and that's a 1 plus 1 over x plus 1 over x squared. Now, as we look at the limit as x goes to infinity, everywhere I've got an x appearing in these expressions is in the denominator. Those are all going to 0. And so what I'm left with is, what's the limit as x goes to infinity? The top is going to x squared times 1. x squared is getting big. So the top's going to infinity. It's roughly x squared. Well, the top is x squared, it's, and it's blowing up to infinity. The bottom's going to 1. So the whole thing's going to infinity. OK, so let me just flash back to the example we did involving a ratio back here. And let's see if we can come up with some ideas. How do we deal with limits at, at infinity of rational functions? 
Well, remember for this one, degree of the numerator and denominator were the same. The answer turned out to be the leading coefficients. And that's because we essentially ignored all of this stuff, except for the leading coefficients. The leading coefficients really determines the growth of the polynomial. And if we're looking at uh, x going to infinity or negative infinity, all we really care about is that leading term. In this case, they were the same, so the limiting value should be the ratio of their coefficients. In these examples we just did here, the bottom was much bigger than the top. One could, in some sense, think of this as being, if you wanted to, a 0x cubed. So now, if we say, well, what is the ratio of these two polynomials as x gets really big, it could be the ratio of their leading coefficients. You know, this is a rough way to look at it. And the top coefficient, since the term wasn't there, is 0, and the bottom one was 1, so the answer should be 0 over 1, which is what we got here, or 0. For this last one, the leading coefficient, well, the top was x to the fourth, the bottom was x squared, x to the fourth grows much faster than x squared, so the whole thing should go to infinity because the top's a much a polynomial that grows much faster. You could also think of it as, well, on the bottom is a 0 x to the fourth plus these lower terms. And this coefficient is 1. So we had a 1 leading coefficient of x to the fourth on top, a 0 on the bottom. So the, what's the ratio? It'll be 1 over something really small, which is something that's really big, or in other words, infinite. Okay, so there's, there is this idea of one can compute the limits at infinity of rational functions by just focusing on what the degree of the polynomial is on top and the polynomial on the bottom. If they're the same, it's the ratio of the coefficients. If they're different, it depends on whether the top is bigger than the bottom or the bottom bigger than the top, which one grows faster. The top's growing faster, the whole thing's going to go to infinity. The bottom's growing faster, the whole thing's going to go to zero. Let's look at the last two examples. Limit as x goes to infinity of e to the x. What does that equal to? Well, we've already seen this. That's infinity. The exponential function, we know what the graph looks like. It looks like this. And so as x goes to infinity, e to the x goes to infinity. What about this one? Limit as x goes to infinity of e to the x over x squared. Here's where things start, we start to see that they get a little bit trickier. So as x goes to infinity, the top, oh, it's going to infinity. What's the bottom function doing? Oh, x squared, that's going to infinity. So we got something big over something big. Both things are getting big. What's the ratio doing? Well, this really depends now on how fast the top is getting big in relation to how fast the bottom is getting big. We really care about the relative growth rates. Is the exponential function growing faster than the polynomial? Or is the polynomial growing faster than the exponential function? Now, due to you know, our experience with exponential functions and the fact that when we, when we first introduced them, we talked about them, uh, an exponential function as being a function who's got a really fast growth rate, you may be able to sort of infer what the answer to this should be. Exponential functions grow faster than polynomials, so the answer should be infinity, because the top would grow faster than the bottom. But actually, um, doing the calculation which supports this is, is something that's not within the scope of what we can do just yet. So we'll come back to this. I put it here because I want to just show you, uh, so come back to this. I wanted to show you that there still are some limits, limits at infinity and limits in general, that we haven't been able to answer yet. And that's good because we're still developing these tools. And we'll start to see that as we develop more and more tools, we can come back to problems that were difficult at the time we encountered them, like this one. And with new tools, we'll see that they're, they're actually a snap. We can, we can answer them quite quickly with some new tools. So we'll come back to this in section. 4.4. 4. All right, so that's it for this section, and thanks very much for watching. We'll see you again next time.